Um, welcome to this um, mental fitness webinar. And the topic today is why self sabotage is ruining your life. The three reasons why you may be procrastinating, don't believe in yourself, and why you may sometimes be your own worst enemy. You have invested your very precious time today, and I'd love you to get a good return on investment of that time. So I'm going to ask a few things of you if you want to get a good return on investment. The first thing is to listen actively. This is not meant to be like uh, watching a Netflix show. Um, it, uh, listening and um, you know really listening to what's what's being said and maybe taking some notes doing the exercises um, I hope you've been able to download the uh, the worksheet if you haven't it's not really a problem you can take your own notes but um, that's just there to to make things a little bit easier and um, also I'm going to ask you to commit to take some action from what you've learned today and whatever action you take is up to you and if you stay to the end, I have a free gift for you worth um, $250. So um, that's my, my thank you for you staying on till the end of the call. So um, I think uh, some of you know who I am. So I'm uh, Dr. Leonora Rhodes. I began my career as a physician um, too many years ago to remember now, many, many moons ago. And um, I'm also a trained neurotherapist, coach and trainer, author, medical writer and editor and course creator. But what I really am today is a coach who loves, absolutely loves doing this work. And I love being able to help people transform from living um, what's sometimes like a, a mediocre, ordinary life to becoming an extraordinary version of yourself and living the life that you've always dreamed of. So that's kind of, that's who I really am. <laughs> So there's nothing for sale today. Um, like I said earlier, I, um, you know, that there is a gift if you stay on, but my intention today is that I give you some really, really useful information. It is kind of a beginner session and, you know, we're going to be talking about self-sabotage and mental fitness today. So I have a question. It's kind of a rhetorical question, but you can put yes in the chat box if, if you agree also. So my question for you right now is, are you ready to become mentally fit and free from your self-sabotage? So if, if the answer to that is yes, I'd love you to put a, a yes in the chat box if you can find that. So that's the first question. So excellent. Got some yeses coming up there. Second question, are you ready to unleash the wise sage within you and take command of your mind and your destiny? And again, if you wouldn't mind just putting a yes in the chat box. Fantastic, we've got an absolutely and a yes, both wonderful answers. So guess what? You are in the right place. And um, I, I, I'm convinced this session is gonna be really, really helpful for you today. So who is this for? Um, this is for people who are committed to change, who know that there's something that needs to be changed in their life and, and they're committed to doing what it takes. Um, if you're tired of settling for a mediocre life, this is also for you. And if you have dreams that you know are just within your reach, but something is getting in the way, then this webinar is for you. Who it's not for, if you want a quick fix and you're not willing to put in any effort, then this work really isn't for you. It does, it does require some work and some effort. If you love working hard and getting very poor results, then this is also not for you. If you're willing to settle for that kind of life, then this is not for you. And it also, if you don't have a bigger vision for your life, and I do know some people like that. Um, I, a good friend of mine, in fact, um, said she's very happy with the life she's got and she doesn't want anything to change. So if she was on this call, I would say to her, don't waste your 45 minutes, go and do something else. Um, but if you do have a bigger vision for your life, then you are in the right place. So in the next 45 minutes, I'm going to show you how to recognize self-sabotage and to learn to stop it in its tracks, to have power over it. The second thing is to take command of your mind. And the third is to unleash the wise sage within you so that you can become the best, best version of yourself. 
So I'd love to do a quick exercise with you. This exercise is called the magic wand. And the magic wand is an exercise. You may have um, done this with me before. The magic wand is an exercise where I'm going to ask you, if I was to give you a magic wand and I was to be able to kind of say that you could change anything in your life, what would you want less of in your life? So the first question is with this magic wand, what would you want less of in your life? And just write that down. So with this magic wand, what would I want less of? And with this magic wand, what would you want to feel less often? And I just quickly want to say that we've got a late joiner. Hello and welcome. Um, sorry, um, we've already uh, got started, but um, this is a perfect time to join in. So with the magic wand, what would you want less of and what would you want to feel less often? And also with this magic wand, what would you want more of in your life? And what would you want to feel more often? So let me ask you a question. With these things that you just come up with, what if you could achieve everything you set out to achieve? Just have a think for a moment about how your life would be different if everything you set your mind to achieve, you could achieve it. Now, this brings me to a very good question. Why is it that really smart people, and I know all of you on the call today, and I know you're all very smart people. So why is it that some of us very, very smart people don't achieve all the things we set out to? And the answer is often self-sabotage. When I'm coaching people and I ask, you know, what might be preventing you from you know, living the life that you want to be living. And one of the answers that nearly always comes up is it's me. It's, it's my own mindset. So why do people self-sabotage? What an interesting thing to do to ourselves. So a really quick kind of overview of why we do this. And, and those of you who know me well know that I'm, you know, really into neuroscience. So Here's a quick run through why we self-sabotage. So very broadly speaking, the mind is what the brain does. So the mind is what the brain is doing. Now the brain is not a computer. It is in fact a highly complex, ever-changing organ. And it really, when you study the, the brain, it, you realize that it is this, you know, incredible organ. And, you know, even if computers ever get to the computing power of the human brain, I don't think they're ever actually going to be able to even compete with the human brain. It is truly remarkable. Now, the problem with it is, is that it is highly sensitive to changes in its environment. And it's also very liable to damage. We've all heard of incidents where, you know, people have been um, doing great in their life and then they have a pretty minor head injury. Some, you know, sometimes when people have a minor head injury, sometimes they surprisingly, they die from a, a, what seemed like a pretty small trauma. And sometimes people have um, a small trauma to their brain, but it has significant effects on how their brain works. Now, the brain works with chemical and electrical signals. And very broadly speaking, if you have an unhealthy brain, you have an extremely hard time having a healthy mind. It's a real uphill battle. So some other facts about mindset that lead us to this interesting pattern of self-sabotage is that we have, you have, around 6,000 thoughts per day. And many of those thoughts are just not true. Our thoughts change the brain chemistry and the functioning of our brain. Our thoughts also create feelings and emotions and feelings and emotion trigger patterns of thinking. And sometimes, unfortunately, people 
get stuck in emotional and thought patterns that just do not serve them. If we were computers, we wouldn't do this. We would stick to being perfect, but because of our brain being this highly complicated organ, we get stuck in emotional and thought patterns that really don't serve us. And one word for this is self-sabotage. So the next exercise I have for you to ponder and to write down, hopefully, is what have been the costs up until now, up until today, of your self-sabotage? So I'm just going to give you a minute to write down all of the costs so far of your self-sabotage. Wonderful. So I hope you've got um, got some things written down. I don't know if anybody's willing to share in the chat if there is anything that they're aware of that have been the cost so far of self-sabotage. So if you're willing to share, please pop it in the chat. Last time I did this presentation, there was a man came on the call and he said he estimated that his self-sabotage had cost him well over a million dollars in his life and his business. A million dollars, can you imagine? So what have been the costs of your self-sabotage so far? So no one's sharing, so we're gonna move on. I hope you've got some things written down. Wonderful, here's, here's one. So self-sabotage has nev negatively impacted my relationships with my kids. Yeah, I hear that really, really often. So yes, yeah, self-sabotage often has a big impact on our relationships with other people. Thank you for, um, for sharing and being honest there. So my next question for you is, having identified what these costs have been up until this moment in time now, my next question is, are you willing to continue to pay this price for the rest of your life? And you may be willing to, you may be willing to settle for paying this price, um, but I suspect because you're on this call, the answer may be a firm no. So the good news is that it doesn't have to be this way. We don't have to self-sabotage as much as we have been. And, we, and we've got, just got another answer pop up. Self-sabotage has been um, having uh, causing problems with low self-esteem and making the wrong choices. Yeah, I hear that. Uh, I hear that often too. So very interesting. So like I said, it doesn't have to be this way. That's the really, really good news. And, and just quickly to mention, every single person on the planet self-sabotages, even the most highly evolved people, the Dalai Lama, the Pope, Tony Robbins, whoever you admire, those highly evolved people, they all do it too. So, so that's the good news. You are not alone if you're self-sabotaging. So I want to introduce you to um, a concept called positive intelligence. And positive intelligence is an operating system for mental fitness. And I'm really pleased to share this with you because I just love this work. It's, it's, it's almost so simple that it's, it's um, ridiculous, but I think you're going to love it. So what is mental fitness first? Let's just give you a quick definition. So mental fitness is your capacity to respond to life's challenges with a positive rather than a negative mindset. And this definition comes from Shirzad Sharman. And, you know, I think you will all agree that Unfortunately, life is full of challenges and we can never really make those challenges go away. So wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to face those challenges when they do inevitably occur with a positive rather than a negative mindset? And the impact of working on improving your mental fitness, and this is backed up by so much research, I can't even begin to share it, um, but it improves physical and mental well-being. It improves performance in everything you do from, you know, uh, from doing the dishes at home through to uh, through to, you know, highly complex tasks at work or in life. 
it also increases your peace of mind and your general wellness. And it also improves your relationships and helps you be able to create more healthy relationships in your life, which, you know, many people say that um, our, our quality of life really is defined by the, the quality of our relationships. So super important. And overall, your quality of life. So I'm, I have a neuroscience background, as I shared, I needed to know that this stuff was backed up by research. So this, the research that um, founded this program that I'm going to share with you, it comes from neuroscience, positive psychology, cognitive psychology, and performance science. And it is backed up by extensive comprehensive research. And if you want to see the research, it's summarized in the book, Positive Intelligence by Shirzad Sharman. It's got a great kind of appendix of, of a lot of the research. There's been even more done since then. So what are the three things that allow people to become mentally fit. There are only three. There, this research basically found that there were three things that were at the root of all mental fitness. The first is to be able to, to intercept the things that sabotage you. And we call these the saboteurs. The second is to be able to access the sage within you. And the third is to have self-command of your mind and your attention at any time. So what do I mean by the saboteurs? So the saboteurs motivate you through negative emotions, through fear and stress, anger and guilt, shame and insecurity. And we all know people who engage in these patterns of emotions a lot of the time. They're constantly stressed or they're always angry. I saw a friend a couple of days ago and he seems to be permanently angry. angry. It can't be a nice way to live. And, um, and so these negative emotions are frequently driving you when you're in saboteur state. What about the sage? So the sage motivates you through positive emotions, emotions like empathy, curiosity, creativity, passion, and purpose. Now, the saboteurs, I sometimes have people say, but this way of thinking has really, really got me to where I am today. And it often does. But the problem, the sacrifice is that it might give you success but it's unlikely to give you sustained success and happiness at the same time. Whereas the sage is able to generate a higher level of success, even more success than, than the saboteurs, but also can, uh, can help you access sustained happiness. The saboteurs are in a particular part of the brain, in a different part of the brain from the sage. They're in the brainstem, the more ancient part of the brain. They're in the deep limbic system, which is all about the, uh, the basic uh, regulation of emotions and also parts of the left side of the brain, which is all about logic and reason. Whereas the sage is in the front part of the brain, the most highly evolved part of the brain, the empathy circuitry and right parts of the brain that are more about, um, about going with the flow and being creative and embracing everything that life brings. The saboteurs, there are 10 of these that have been identified through this research I mentioned, and there are five sage powers. So let's talk about what am I going on about this saboteur interceptor? So I want to begin by telling you a story of William. He was a client that um, I have just taken through uh, the Positive Intelligence Program. He's a 55-year-old man, and he had been a CEO of a tech company, and he'd um, sold his tech company and decided to become a business coach. His whole life, he had never felt good enough even when he'd become successful in this company and, uh, and gone on to sell it. His whole life, he had felt like he was a fraud. This had caused a lot of relationship problems throughout his whole life. And the most significant of those was that he had ended um, having, uh, going through a very painful divorce. And he had few friends to speak of at the time when I was coaching with him. Um, his top saboteur, you're going to learn these names in a moment, were hyperachiever, controller, and hyperrational. 
And his PQ score, which is your overall score of how mentally fit you are, was 38. And just to give you a reference point, a healthy uh, mental fitness score is 75 or over. So his was pretty low. And he actually came to work with me because he'd recently been diagnosed with high blood pressure. He'd had a suspected heart attack, which they'd come to the conclusion wasn't actually a heart attack. It was more of a kind of stress attack and he'd been diagnosed with chronic stress. So William was not in a good place when I started working with him. So these saboteurs that we're talking about, they are in part genetically programmed. You know, we have this wiring in our brain that's in part genetically programmed. It's been passed down through generations. We all know of families where there's a lot of anxious people or families that tend to be very, very creative. So some of it's genetic and some of it has been developed during your life at times when you are vulnerable in order to protect you. And this could have been in childhood, it could have been in teenagers or even less, less often, but in adulthood at times when you were experiencing trauma or you were feeling insecure. So the saboteurs at some point were trying really, really hard to protect you. And they may have done a good job for a small period of time. The problem is they've just hung around too long. So the first of these wonderful saboteurs that are just trying to protect you and keep you safe is the judge. And everybody has the judge. The judge is busy all the time and the judge turns their attention, his or her attention to number one, to you yourself. The judge says things like, why did you make that stupid mistake? You're not good enough. Nobody's ever going to love you. Nobody's ever going to like you. The judge also not being um, content with just being mean to you. <laughs> the judge also turns his or her attention to other people. Other people are idiots. Why do other people always make mistakes? Why is nobody as, uh, you know, have a high standard like I do? And sometimes the judge is, you know, meaner to yourself than it is to other people, but sometimes your judge can be pretty mean to other people as well. Lastly, the judge also turns its attention to your situation or circumstances. It says things like, why do bad things always happen to me? Why is COVID happening? Why am I being so badly affected by what is going on in the world? So that's the judge, busy all the time and every single person on the planet has it. So then we have these um, ac accompanying saboteurs and there are nine of them. The first beautiful protective saboteur that may be showing up in your life is the controller. The, the controller says, if I'm not in control of everything, the sky may fall in. So this, the controller says, I need to know what's going on all the time, and I do not like unpredictable change. Then we have the hyperachiever. The hyperachiever says, I am only good enough if I am achieving the next thing. And the hyperachiever also often says, there's always another level. You just need to do more. You need to be more. You need to get the next certificate. You need to um, get the next job. Then you can be happy. Then we have the restless and the restless gets bored easily and is always looking for something more interesting, more fun, more, more, more. So next we have the stickler and the stickler wants things to be done in a certain way, done to perfection. There's no wiggle room. It needs to be done my way or it's wrong. Then we have the pleaser. The pleaser wants everybody else to be happy and wants them all to be happy all the time. Otherwise, I feel like a failure. And then there is the hypervigilant. The hypervigilant, and this is, the hypervigilant is one that often, uh, you know, there is a genetic proponent, but, but may, have, may have occurred during childhood if there was a lot of stress going on. So the hypervigilant says, there is danger all around. You never know when something bad is going to happen. And if I don't worry about what is bad, to, uh, what is bad that might happen, then everything is gonna go wrong. 
So that's the hypervision. The hypervision is pretty exhausting. Then we have the avoider. The avoider doesn't like to feel uncomfortable. So avoids doing anything that might cause stress or discomfort. Then we have the victim. The victim feels that bad things always happen to you and that it's rarely my fault. Why are circumstances always um, against me? And, and often uh, people who have a high victim saboteur um, have, a, uh, have a sense of feeling rejected and, um, and, and so that they often um, feel that people are against them. And last but certainly not least, we have the hyperrational. So the hyperrational is very logical. Unsurprisingly, remember I talked earlier about the, uh, the left side of the brain, which is all about logic and rational. Um, so the hyperrational is logical, inflexible. If something doesn't make total sense to me, it is wrong. I am wrong, I am right rather, and you are wrong if you are not making total logical sense. And this is, you know, this is often seen most commonly in people who um, come from kind of a science or a techie background because that's the, their job is to be hyper-rational. And so the, the hyper-rational shows up in other areas of your life. As I mentioned earlier, every single person on the planet has the saboteurs. They are all harmful if they are turned up too high or if they are showing up in circumstances where they are not needed. And it's likely that your saboteurs are responsible for some of the problems that you've had in your life. Not all of them, of course, you know, bad things do happen that are out of your control, but your saboteurs are very likely to have caused a lot of your stress in your life. And they will continue. Uh, they're deep rooted and wired into your brain. So if you do nothing about them, it's likely they will continue to show up. So how do you find out what your saboteurs are? And I think this is on the worksheet. Um, you might want to jot this down, but if you go to positiveintelligence.com forward slash assessments, you will see you can take the saboteur assessment. Please don't do it now. It takes about five minutes to do it and it will answer, ask you a series of questions and you come up with your score and it's super interesting. It also has a report. And um, so I encourage you to, to go and do that. Um, it's likely when you see what your saboteurs are, there will be no surprises there for you, but it's, it's still good to have it um, mapped out in front of you. So here's a testimonial from William. I mentioned William earlier, earlier on this 55-year-old um, um, CEO turned business coach. And he said, as a coach myself, I've done a lot of personal development training and made a lot of progress in my life. But I still had a pattern of self-sabotage, which stopped me from getting to the next level. And like I said earlier, you know, this poor guy had felt all his life like a fraud. Um, with the PQ work and Leonora as my coach, I felt like I'd finally find a way, finally found a way to access the best version of myself. This work was the missing piece. I wish I had discovered it years ago. And people often with this work, people often say to me, oh, my goodness, if I'd had this work earlier on in my life, my life would have been very different. So what about the sage, the wonderful sage within you? So. The sage lives in a different part of the brain from the saboteurs. The sage lives in the part of the brain that's associated with positive emotions, peace and calm, clear-headed focus, creativity, seeing the big picture, and living life in ease and flow. So not resisting, living life in ease and flow. So how do we develop more of the sage powers. And, and people often say to me, you know, when we're starting this work, it seems like the saboteurs seem, you know, more obvious, but how do we develop the sage powers? And so the first thing that we teach you when we go into the sage is that the sage believes that every outcome or circumstance, everything that happens to you can be turned into a gift and opportunity. And, um, you know, it can be easier said than done, 
but but actually with practice you can learn to do this and um i often say when i had i had really bad covid and thought i might die and i was really angry afterwards and i was doing this i was doing this work at the time and i was like you can't tell me that there's any gift and opportunity with having nearly died of covid um but i have found it now and it's been very powerful so the sage like i said has five powers and these powers are the powers to empathize with yourself and with other people. The power to explore what is really going on here and not just to take things at surface value. The power to innovate and come up with new ways of doing things. And you'll all probably be aware of Einstein's old um, expression about um, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So the sage is able to say, oh my goodness, what I've been trying up until this point just isn't working. How do I come up with new ways to find a solution to this problem that I'm facing? And then navigate. Navigate is coming up with a plan and coming up with a, a plan of action that stands a high chance of um, working. And then last but not least is activate, which basically means taking action. When you've come up with a really good plan, how do you actually take action consistently so you get to where you want to go? And people who develop the sage powers are able to access them and activate them on command whenever they need to. So the third power that I told you about was the power of self-command. And, um, you know, I show this picture of somebody punching through a, a wooden block. And I, I know a couple of you on the call have done some Tony Robbins stuff. And, uh, you know, when you do Tony Robbins um, trainings, you're, uh, you may have to punch through a wooden board or walk on fire even. So how are some people able to command their mind to do what is extraordinary, and that's the power of self-command. I have a question for you. How much of the time are you fully in command of your mind, and not just letting your subconscious mind and your saboteurs be in control? What percentage of your waking hours are you fully in command of your mind and, and write it down. And it's highly, un, I, I haven't ever met anybody who said 100%. I think I actually think that's not possible. But certainly with this work, then you can get more in command of, um, of your mind than, than it's likely you already are. And when I first started doing this work, I estimated I was probably in command of my mind, maybe 10% of the time. And there are some days when I, you know, there are some days when I'm as low as five, maybe when I'm not having a good day, I still have bad days now, but I am definitely more in control of my mind. And some days I just seem to be on fire and I'm in control of my mind a huge amount of the time. So the mind is rather like an old iPhone. And I speak from experience, I have an old iPhone. My old iPhone needs, if I'm using it a lot, it needs charging several times a day. And your mind is like that too. It needs charging, recharging several times a day because it runs out of energy and it runs out of self-command. So I want to introduce you to a topic, uh, a concept rather that's called PQ reps. And PQ reps are a way of developing the self-command mental muscle. And we call them reps because, you know, it's, it's like the analogy of, uh, of going to the gym. You don't get fit and strong, strong in particular, by going to the gym one time or even once a week, once a month, and lifting a 100 pound weight. You and I both know that's not how you get physically fit. You have to do repetitions and you have to sm start small and build it up until you build up your strength. And it's the same with the mental muscle of self-command. 
and here's another quick testimonial. Um, I'll just go to the end bit. This was Tara who just went through my program um, about six weeks ago. My mental state is more positive. I have more energy and feel more focused and clear. If you're feeling stuck or want to break bad habits that are impeding your happiness and success, I would strongly consider doing this work. So I'd love to show you how to do a PQ rep now. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is to just make yourself comfortable um, wherever you're seated. Um, if you're standing, it's probably better to sit down now. If you are happy to, please close your eyes, but you don't, it's not, it's not um, compulsory. And I want you to bring your fingertips of your right hand to the fingertips of the left hand and just press the fingertips together. Rub them together now with such intensity that you can feel the ridges on your fingertips. Feel the ridges on your fingertips. Now, just with your, with your index finger, the finger next to your thumb, just rub those fingertips together. Notice the sensation as you rub lightly. Notice the sensation as you rub a little more firmly. Now bring all the fingertips back together and run the fingertips of the right hand down the fingers of the left to your palm. Move your fingertips around the palm of your left hand. Notice what you notice. Notice the ridges. Notice the deep lines. Notice the temperature and any other sensations. And now bring your hands together and open your eyes and stretch. Wonderful. So if we had been looking at your brain when you had done this PQ rep, what we would have seen was a quieting of the saboteur part of your brain, that more ancient part of your brain that's involved with fight and flight and the stress reaction and all of those judge and saboteur thoughts, we would have seen a quieting of that part of the brain. And we would have seen an activation of the sage part of the brain. In fact, the blood flow to that part of the brain would have increased. It's really remarkable and they do scans of, of this type of work. And we would have seen increased activation of the, of the um, sage part of the brain. So I hope that was, um, that was uh, an interesting experience for you. So just a quick recap of this operating system that I've been telling you about today. So the first is these negative emotions, this saboteur mode, being able to notice when you're in it, because unless you can notice that you're in it, how on earth can you have control over it? So being, being able to notice when you're in saboteur mode and say, I don't wanna be here and intercept it. Next, to be able to activate the sage perspective and the sage powers and to come from this um, perspective more of the time. And the third is to um, to get more self-command of your mind with PQ reps. And what the PQ reps do is they recharge your batteries and allow you to shift from saboteur to sage. So I've shared a lot of information with you. And when I get to this stage, I always tell everybody, you have two choices at this stage. And you can either dabble in this mental fitness work, or you can move towards mastery. And just so you know, 
I dabble in many things in my life and it's just fine. I'm not against dabbling at all. But the problem with dabbling is you might make progress for a short period of time and then it's likely that you're going to hit a plateau um, or maybe you'll have a problem and then you'll simply get bored and give up. Now, people who really, really are committed to change in their life need to commit to mastery and mastery will get you to where dabbling never will. And master, uh, to, to get to mastery, you need to commit to consistent work and taking action. And this isn't for everybody. And for some people, it's not for you right now, but it might be for you at another time. And that's just fine. So if you are somebody who wants to gain mastery of your mind and get rid of self-sabotage in your life once and for all, you need to have the right plan. You also need to have the right strategies and you also need to get the right help. So earlier on, I mentioned to you that, um, that if you stayed on the call, uh, that there is a, a free gift and I'd love to share that free gift with you now. So if you would like me to give you a plan that will help you finally overcome self-sabotage and become mentally fit, um, then I'm offering you a, a call today with me. Um, and I offer this service because I am a coach who is completely committed to helping people go from settling for a mediocre, ordinary life to creating an extraordinary life on their terms. And, and I know some of you have worked with me before, and I think you'll know that I am completely passionate about this work and I absolutely love it. And um, so I have set aside some time in the next week to speak to five people about how you can um, apply these ideas um, to your life today. And as you know, I have this webinar this morning. Some people are going to be watching the um, the replay and I also have another webinar this afternoon so I only have space for five people um, because I am uh, pretty full up with um, with coaching and my other commitments right now so on this call if you would like to have one of these calls I am committing to helping you solve your biggest problem that you're facing right now and on this call firstly we'll talk about your biggest challenge Next, I will help you come up with a plan to solve it. And third, I will help you set out a step-by-step -step plan so that you can reach your goal without having to, you know, often with self-sabotage and um, lack of mental fitness, people end up having to self-medicate or spend months going off to a meditation retreat. I don't want you to have to, to, uh, to do either of those things. So who is this for? This is for people who are committed to change. This work um, requires some effort on your part. Unfortunately, I haven't managed to invent the magic uh, wand just yet. So you, you do have to be committed. You also have to be open to new ways of thinking. The old ways of thinking that have got you to where you are now will get you to the same place as you are now. So you're going to need to be open to new ways of thinking. You must be able to take responsibility for your actions and your results. If you're dependent on other people for that, then, uh, you know, this call is not for you. You must also be determined to succeed. You must be willing to know that you are worth putting in this work. So if you can say yes to all of those questions that I, uh, I just brought up then, then I'm happy to offer you a free 45 minute strategy. I sometimes call it a discovery call. So if it sounds like this is for you, simply schedule a call with me and I'm gonna pop, um, hopefully this will work, the link, yes, there it goes, in the, um, uh, in the chat box. So if you would like to have a discovery call with me to learn more about this work and whether you might be a good fit for it, then please um, jump jump on and, uh, and grab one of those five sessions with me. Um, so I've lost my cursor, here we go. 
Um, and afterwards, you'll see there's also a form when you when you go into that link, there's a form with a few questions about you and what you are looking to accomplish. Like I said, this work isn't for everybody. So it's important that we um, just make sure that um, you're a good fit right at the outset. So next steps for you. The first thing I'd encourage you to do is look at what at the notes that you've written on this call and write down what are the three, one to three things that were the key learnings from this call. Next, I would urge you to commit to three action steps. They don't have to be big things, they can really be small things. So what are three action steps that you will take to change your life today? And then optional, as I said, this is not for everybody, optional, book a call with me today using this link. So that's it for, uh, for this part of the call today.